Plants sense and then respond to the world around them. Their stems and leaves grow towards the light, whilst their roots grow towards water and nutrients. We all know that if we forget to water our plants, the soil dries and the plant wilts. However, plants can sense when this is happening, and they take preventative action to try to reduce water loss and conserve water. But plants don't have a brain or nervous system or any of the other sensory organs that we see in animals. Instead, plants rely on hormones that act as chemical messengers that travel from one part of the plant to another to tell it what to do. When plants sense dry soil, they send a signal to the leaves to produce the drought stress hormone, abscisic acid, also known as ABA, which closes the microscopic leaf pores to prevent water loss. In recent years, it's been shown that ABA is manufactured in the leaves, so we wanted to ask the question, could the ABA signaling be traveling the opposite direction, from the leaves to the roots? And under what conditions might this happen? How would the leaves react when they're exposed to dry air, low humidity, whilst the roots are still in nice, damp soil? Our research group engineered the next generation biosensor, Abacus 2, that can track very low concentrations of ABA. So we can actually watch this drought stress hormone accumulate in living, growing plants at high resolution, in fact, at the individual cell level. The first Abacus biosensor was engineered in 2014 and allowed us to visualize ABA dynamics in Arabidopsis uh, plants but it wasn't very sensitive to lower concentrations of ABA that we thought were probably very important. So we set out to re-engineer Abacus 1. So we use uh, microbes to make the genes for the biosensors and also other microbes like yeast to, as little factories to actually produce these proteins. Um, they're fluorescent and their fluorescence properties change when the hormone is present and we can work faster in these microbial systems to make lots of different yeast expressing lots of different biosensors and take the best ones. We use uh, protein structures to predict uh, changes that might work best and give us the properties that we want, both to make them more sensitive to the hormone and also give us the fluorescence changes that we would like. So that is a big part of FRET biosensor engineering, the type of biosensor we do, is to get a big fluorescence ratio change uh, when the hormone is present or absent. And that is what uh, Mathieu in the lab was able to do successfully. Uh, and then we take those genes that code for those proteins and um, introduce them into plants. And then those plants can tell us, uh, based on their fluorescence changes, how much hormone is present in actually at the cellular level. Our biosensors showed that under low humidity, ABA actually travels down to the roots to tell the roots to keep growing. This result was pretty surprising as ABA is historically thought of as a growth inhibitor, not a growth stimulator. It's the ABA concentration levels that are key. Just the right amount of extra ABA promotes growth, but too much and the roots will stop growing. This could actually be really important during water stress. This shoot to root signaling pathway potentially helps the plant to search for water, giving it a greater chance of survival. This is a fundamental plant development finding that can help us to understand what physiological changes are happening to crops grown under irrigation, where the air may be dry, but the roots are growing in wet soil. This is an increasingly prevalent condition with climate change.